Hello, I'm Carlo Benacker at the Institute Lawrence of Leiden University. And today we will be talking about um, Majorana fermions. Majorana fermions bound to defects in exotic materials. And um, I will walk you through what I think is the, is the simplest example which also has, is the example which goes furthest back in history. And this is the example of where the defect is a vortex in a superconductor. So th this was actually, some, it basically started in the, in the early days of, of superconductivity when it was realized that vortices in superconductors can bind particles. So if this is the, the sketch of the excitation gap in a superconductor, a vortex is a place where the, the gap closes, so the gap goes to zero and then so there's this region here, it's like a hole in the superconductor, and in this hole there's no gap, and so particles can be trapped inside. And, and superconductors have this, this peculiar symmetry, which is called particle hole symmetry, which means that actually these levels have to be symmetrically arranged around the middle of the gap. So zero energy is, is not just arbitrary in a superconductor, it's arbitrary in many other situations, but not in a superconductor. In a superconductor, zero energy is the middle of the gap. And so there's the symmetry that if there's a level above, there should be a level below. And the symmetry is expressed in, in second quantization by this relation between creation operators at energy E and annihilation operators at energy minus E. And it occurred to, to several researchers in the late 1990, uh, notably uh, Grisha Volovic, that if you manage to somehow have a level at zero energy, then you would have gamma equals gamma dagger. And this is the, the hallmark, the, the definition, if you wish, of a Majorana fermion, a particle which is equal to its own antiparticle. So this looks, this looks pretty good, actually. So if we want to have Majorana fermions, we just have to have a level at zero. And you might ask, well, why isn't there typically a level at zero? This is because of zero-point motion. So zero-point motion is this unavoidable consequence of quantum mechanics that if you can find particles, the lowest level will not be at the lowest point of the, of the gap, but will be a little bit displaced a little bit above it. And so this somehow seems immediately like a non-starter. Uh, Zero-point motion is so fundamental, how can you come up with some particle or some material which has no zero-point motion? And so it seems as if nature prevents the occurrence of, of Majorana fermions in this superconducting context. This was probably in 1999, 1998. And then not much happened actually with this proposal until a decade later. And something important happened in condensed matter physics in that decade. And that important thing which kept many of us busy was the discovery of, of graphene. Now graphene is, um, probably many of you know about graphene, it's a two-dimensional system. And it has one something peculiar, and this was discovered in the early experiments by, by Philip Kim and Andre Geim and Kostya Novoselov. They discovered that if you can find particles in graphene, there's no zero-point motion. And this was an experimental discovery. The, the way they did this was they applied a perpendicular magnetic field so that these carriers, these particles, would move in circles. And these, this quantization of the orbit gives you levels. They're called Landau levels. And unlike any other material where the lowest Landau level is, is displaced from zero, in graphene, the lowest Landau level is at zero energy. No zero-point motion. What are these exotic particles? They are called uh, sometimes Dirac fermions. They have a very special dispersion relation. The dispersion relation looks like this. It's, it's, it's a conus. Instead of being parabolic, it, it has this conical shape. So it, it has a linear relation between energy and momentum. And this is what you find if you look at relativistic particles. So massless relativistic particles governed by the Dirac equation, they're called Dirac fermions, and that's actually the dispersion relation in graphene. And so if you can find Dirac fermions, you can do that without zero point motion. And, and this is an amazing discovery. And so you might think, okay, let's just take graphene and, and a layer of graphene. It's now graphene is not superconducting by itself, but that's okay. We just put it on top of a superconductor. It will become superconducting by the proximity effect pierce a vortex through it, we'll have a level at zero, and we're done. We have Majorana fermions. And, and this never happens. And this never happened because actually graphene gives you too much of a good thing. 
And this is because of degeneracies. So notice that this level at zero is, is, is stable only because and only if it is non-degenerate. If it's non-degenerate, you cannot push it up, you cannot push it down without breaking the degeneracy. But if it would be degeneracy, you could just split, if it would be degenerate, you would just split it symmetrically. And this is what happens in graphene. So levels in graphene are actually fourfold degenerate. There's spin degeneracy, that's a factor of two. And there's a band structure degeneracy, which is called valley degeneracy, that's another factor of two. So graphene gives you too much of a good thing. What we need is one quarter of graphene, one quarter of the degeneracy in graphene. And these materials exist. One quarter of graphene exists, and it's called a topological insulator. A three-dimensional topological insulator has a two-dimensional conducting surface, which behaves very similarly to graphene, has the same dispersion relation, same massless Dirac fermions, with one key distinction, there's no degeneracy. No spin degeneracy, no valley degeneracy. So instead of doing this experiment in graphene, where it would not work, you want to do it on the surface of a three-dimensional topological superconductor, three-dimensional topological insulator. Make it superconducting by putting a superconductor on top, pierce a vortex through it, and you'll have Majorana fermions. This beautiful idea occurred to Liang Fu and Charlie Kane in 2008. And it's one of these ideas I still remember vividly reading about it on the archive. I've been working on graphene for like half a decade. I had never heard of Majorana fermions. I remember looking them up in, in Wikipedia. And it occurred to me, wow, this is such a beautiful, simple idea. I, I, I applauded these authors for having invented this idea, but I wish I would have had the same idea just a few months earlier, which I didn't. So this is a, a beautiful idea, and it hasn't, has not yet been realized experimentally. And this is a material science problem, because three-dimensional topological insulators are much more complicated to, to, to much less tractable than graphene, and so we'll have to wait. Another realization which is closer to experimental reality is the realization which will be, dis will be uh, studied in at, at the beginning of, 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 this, uh, of this course, which is actually the two-dimensional counterpart to this. So here we have a three-dimensional topological insulator, and we have a two-dimensional surface. But we could also start from a two-dimensional topological insulator, which is the quantum spin hull insulator. Then instead of a surface, we have an edge. And instead of confining it by a vortex, you would confining, confine it by some magnetic barrier. So everything would be reduced one dimension lower. This dispersion relation looks the same, but instead of having px and py, you only have px. So it's just one dimensional. So it's easier. And, and there's another thing which is kind of attractive to looking this at this in one dimension lower, because then you have an edge. So you have a Majorana bound to the edge. And that actually looks very similar to Majorana's bound to a wire. And in fact, there is a, there is a big similarity between Majorana's at the endpoints of a wire and Majorana's at the edge of a quantum spin hull insulator. Now, before closing, there's one question which someone of you might ask, and I'll give you the answer. What about the second Majorana? Right? If you have a wire, OK, we have one endpoint of a wire. We have the other endpoint of a wire. Duh, they always come in pairs. We know they have to come in pairs because they're made out of electrons. But here I have my vortex. Here it is, the vortex, one vortex. Where's the other Majorana? So that's the question. I'll give you just a moment to think about it. Now I'll give you the answer. The other Majorana is at the other end, the other edge, the other surface of the 3D topological. Superconductor vortex pierces through, and so there's another Majorana at the opposite edge, at the opposite surface. And so, yes, everything is sane, everything is saved. And that's uh, how it should be.